Welcome back, everybody. We're at the halfway mark with a lot of games left in store. Demon has joined me, and we're speaking with Yellow Star from Fnatic after that win. And there's a lot of things to talk about, especially in picks and bans. But let me first ask you generally what you wanted out of picks and bans. Um, basically, we knew that overall what they were willing to play. So I pretty much predict that they will pick Elise and Trash. So I have something prepared in my mind, and that's why I picked this champion. And speaking of picks and bans, actually, I could see it was mainly you and Soaz discussing. Who is it that actually decides the team comps? Um, we mostly think um, in our team, it doesn't mind who. Just say, I will tell them, they will play this champion, this champion, this champion. <laughs> and you can decide whatever you want to play and what's the best against them. Right. And this is how it works. Then elaborate a little bit, because there were some strange picks and counter picks. I'm thinking about a Malphite uh, Jax mm -hmm. matchup. What was the thought process behind that? Um, Jax is a really strong champion, 1v1. Uh, what we basically wanted to do is someone, something that can deal against him and that can be useful in team fights. And it was a perfect champion. So, so as decided really well. So often we do see the first pick as the AP mid. You're one of the few teams that actually does it, but it worked to great success this time around getting that LeBlanc. Were you surprised to see the Carthus coming out at the end there? Actually, yes. We expected him to play Zix, but it's kind of a similar champion. He's going to lose against LeBlanc, but if he plays safe, he's going to be really safe uh, endgame, and he's going to deal a lot of damage. So it's a similar champion. Did you get some cold sweats because Froggen did really good with Karthus, which you guys last time. We were like, oh no, that one again. Well, we didn't, say, we didn't do the same mistake. Uh, against Frogan, he got unnecessary kills, so he could manage to snowball from that. And this time we were playing more safe, and it was cool. So how's the overall morale in the team? What, I mean, we were talking about at the start of the game. Over the last 10 games, it was one win, nine losses. It's not great, but now you've had two wins Technically, two wins, one loss. I think you could look at it that way. That's a bit nicer. Yeah. Uh, well, when we started to lose like five, six, seven, eight lose in a row, it doesn't really matter. We are like, well, we can only do better. And we are just playing with less pressure. And then we just focus on our game and trying to fix our mistakes. It takes a lot of time. But mm. now we are kind of confident again. Yeah, because you guys actually did really well. Also, yesterday versus the Copenhagen Wolves, was that a dangerous tipping point? Because I can imagine if you lose such a close game that it might go bad with the morale because of it. No, obviously, we just keep our heads up since a lot of weeks. And we know that it was a close game. We could have done way better. But still, we did a good game and they played well. So there is no reason. So I want to take your mind back to, obviously, we're in Super Week. Super Week 1, it was great. You went, what, 4-0, Super Week 2. Do you think it's going to go a similar way? You lost, obviously, yesterday, but it looked fantastic against the Copenhagen Wolves. You've picked up a victory here. You've got two more games, one more today, I believe. Is the pressure on you guys? I mean, how does it develop with Super Weeks for you guys? Is there a lot of work as a team? Do you have to sort of sit through, through pinks and bands for ages, or is it simply a case of let's just play what falls our way? Okay. Yeah, so Super Week is like a normal... LCS week. I mean, we just have to play our matches. We have to do our best. And obviously, we try to win. And that's interesting you say that because I, I distinctly remember the likes of Scara sort of talking about how hard Super Weeks are on teams. But you guys feel it's actually quite the opposite. Is that, is that what makes it work for you guys when it comes to World Finals? You can just adapt so quickly? Yeah, actually, we just take how it is. I mean, if we have five games in a row, we'll play five games in a row. If not, then we just play how it is. How is it um, maybe going on that with the fatigue as to playing? Because we heard a lot of players who've been around the scene for a long time who say, you know, it kind of wears on you if you're playing for such a long time. We also see it reflected that a lot of people that are just coming in the league are doing very, very well. Is that something, a sentiment you share? <laughs> uh, no. Tell us maybe a little bit about your experience of your career that you've been going for a long time. Is it, do you sometimes find it hard to motivate yourself in going? I don't know, it's always feel really cool to play and when you want to play, you always want to win, you're always at the top. So it's what keeps you motivated. What and we really want to know is, does it feel like a job? Because everyone out there watching is thinking, he's a pro gamer for a job. That's his, that's his job and you guys literally get to play a game yeah. all day long. 
Uh, of course, actually, wh what's good is like, Times really goes fast because you do what you like, you do what you love, and if you're really dedicated, of course you would put a lot of efforts in. And if you really want to win, then you will succeed one day. And we saw the other day, obviously Tabs. He plays the piano, likes to get out and stress. Is is there anything in the fanatic household that you guys like like to do as either a team or just individually, just got a different hobby away from league? Yeah, we try to do extra activities outside of the game because obviously playing go out, we party, we take some free time, go to the gym and yeah, this is how it is. We are just normal person, we're young and we want to have fun, of course. Something else I would like to ask you about is the way you guys train. Um, I was thinking about the NA scene where you have TSM that has a very close relationship with practicing with C9. Do you have a similar team that you share that relationship with or certain players that you count on for, for talking about the game or specifically? Um, not really, because if you tend to practice against one team only, you'll get used to them and it's good to have a variety. And so you get to play against a lot of uh, different places. So you can adapt to any situation and it's really cool. And speaking of that variety, is it just LCS teams? Because I remember you guys were practicing like sort of Cloud9 back in the day, NIP are probably in there. Because there's a lot of good challenger teams coming through the scene now. Yeah, I think there is a lot of amateur teams that have a really good level. And I believe that they have a really good potential to get in the LCS next season. So we practice against every team that is strong uh, for us. When you look at that league and you mentioned that there are a lot of strong teams knocking at the door of the teams that are now at the bottom of the standings, can we get a little prediction of how you think the league will go? Or? Um, I cannot say, but I, uh, as I know, Millennium is really far behind in the bottom, but they managed to play a really good game against Rocket yesterday, so I believe that they can still come back, obviously. And you're playing against Millennium later um, in the day. How do you think that matchup is going to go? How strong is our bottom lane? Um, I think they are really solid. But if we manage to play Reckless and me really well, and we do no mistake, we'll probably win. All right. Well, thank you very much, Yellow Star. Congratulations once again. Good luck later as well. And